you said after the shot against Denver that you were kind of feeling a you were feeling a magic that was taking place in Serena, and I wondered if you thought today was like a continuation or a carryover from that because uh, the electricity was certainly in the air down the stretch. Yeah, for sure, it was definitely one of those uh, special moments in Dallas Mavericks history here at the AAC, and got a chance to come back down or come back from 22 down and just work our our way back into the game and just continue to trust our work. So it felt good. Um, yeah, tough one tonight, man. Tough one. Well, when you get rolling like you did in the fourth quarter and you know, before they're starting to send doubles in, what, what's the feeling like when you're in that kind of groove? You see seeing the cover? Uh, I mean, it's an exciting feeling because uh, almost the defensive adjustments are predictable. You know, you just drive right or drive left and they're sending help either from the baseline or from the other side of the paint and want to stop you. So it gives uh, my teammates and also when Luka gets double, it gives myself opportunities to attack with uh, numbers on our side. Uh, so I, I just really welcome that. And, um, you know, when the ball's in my hands and I don't see anybody coming to double, then that's my time to be aggressive. And teammates kept putting the ball in my hands, um, had the matchup tonight. So we're just taking full advantage of it. And I, I had some easy ones go for me tonight. and. You know, just continue to feed off a uh, good energy, man. But it was a total team effort tonight, really. I mean, we, we left it all out there on the floor tonight. You could feel that. Carl, we talk about the post-game celebration. Why was that important to you on the court to have all the players come together like that? Uh, it's just more of those in-the-moment type things, to be honest with you. But um, as a competitor, you're so emotional about you know, this game. It's not really a game to us. You know, when you're out there and you're putting – you know, blood, sweat, and tears into it and being physical. And, of course, we feel the fans and we feel the atmosphere. But when you're a competitor out there and you're a teammate and you're seeing your teammates go to battle, it just does something to you. And, um, you know, we were dog-tired after <laughs> after that uh, buzzer went off. So embrace is important after games like that just to be able to, um, you know, kind of touch your teammates and, and just make sure that we – we all know that the sacrifice is worth it. You know, not a lot of people can understand that because they're not part of team environment, more individualized in their work environment. But here in the team sport and the team aspect, when you can celebrate those moments as a team, because you know what it took. You know, we were in that locker room at halftime. You know, looking at each other. What are we going to do to get back into this game? You know, when they got off to that 22 point lead, we're looking at each other. So no one else is in that huddle but us and the coaching staff and of course management. But it just means something when you can come out with a win like that. It is a regular season game, but we know the position that we're in. I keep saying that and just kind of know uh, what it means to come out on uh, the other side of that, uh, you know, or to come on the other side of, of, of the matchup tonight victorious. So it feels good. Well, a pretty good visual of you and Luca right there in the final seconds with that embrace. Speaking of tired, you both looked exhausted and happy. What does a moment like that say about the two of you guys and where you are and where the team is? Where the team is or me and Luca? Because we get all the questions about me and Luca, so. Where the team is? Yeah, where the team is or just, are you asking about the embrace that me and Luca have? What do you, what do you get, man? Uh, just, just kind of wondering, you know, with you and Luca, mm -hmm. the team that, the, the role that it's on right now and, yeah. and what you guys, you know, have been doing together as part of that. And, and you yourself are on a long stretch of, you know, being out there. So I just kind of wondered what a moment like that feels. Oh, okay. Like. Yeah. No. I was just asking just for specifics. Um, yeah. No. At, at the end of the game, you know, Luca was like, "I'm, I'm, I'm tired, man." And, and that's why I just hugged him, man, at the end of the game because, um, you know, he left it all out there and he did all that he could. And um, everybody in this league is laboring in some sort of way, especially as we head into the playoffs. So. Uh, you just, I feel for them. I feel for uh, a lot of my teammates, and I know they feel for me. So uh, that was kind of like, again, one of those in the moment type things for us as brothers to embrace each other. We know how hard we've worked and uh, how, how much work it took to get to this point in the season. You know, there, there's still nothing guaranteed in terms of our seeding and where we're placed. Um, but we just know what it feels like to be on this side now together as a duo where we're committing to the defensive and the offensive end. We're committing to uh, our leadership roles and we're committing to our teammates and they're doing the same. So I think you're seeing the reciprocity uh, when you see the laughs or
you see the smiles or you see us feeling good about each other. And even when we're down, we're still giving each other positive encouragement. And that goes a long way in any work environment. So when the game is done, the buzzer sounds. It's good to give your brother a hug. Let him know, hey, man, you did a great job tonight. You left it all out the floor. Now let's go get some, let's get some food in. Let's go see our families and lead this game behind us. Carter, you, you and Luca get a lot of the attention with this team, but how fulfilling is it when you see guys like Exum and P.J. Washington make big shots and help you win these games who weren't on this team last year? Yeah, this is why they were brought in. Um, this is why we believe in them since the beginning of the season. Um, you know, Dan, excuse me, Dante, and then getting PJ at the um, at the trade deadline, getting Gafford, and and just building our camaraderie off of that after the trade deadline. Um, you know, because it could have gone either way. We could have failed miserably, or we could be in a position where we're in now, where we've worked ourselves into um, a pretty good rhythm, and uh, we know what to expect each, from each other every single night. And we're welcoming the healthy challenges of the best teams in the league. And this is the mentality that you want to have going into the postseason is we're ready to take on all challengers and we're ready to um, see the best of the best. And in order to be the best of the best, you have to beat the best. And that's, that's our mentality now. And I think you see a lot of the pressure. It, it's created a lot of pressure around me and Luca, but we do a great job addition it off to our teammates too. They're aware of what goes on in our day-to-day -day lives of us being, you know, kind of the best players in the world. And um, I think we try to feed. I know I, I do, and Luca does a great job too, just feeding these guys confidence. And then the reward is on the other side of that. So whether they make shots or not, we're still going to believe in them. It's, it's not going to change. So just got to keep that consistent approach. With that. With that. So Luca passes up a look, uh, and with three seconds. Well, you think he should have shot? Huh? You think he should have shot? No, not apparently not. <laughs> no, no, that sounded like you wanted him to no, shoot. No, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, let me what, find what's out. Going, what's going through your? Like great players taking messed up shots for game winners. That's true. <laughs> okay. Okay. What's going force it. Head? Force it. You're the best in the world. Force it. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> what's going through your head when you see him make that play, which was the right play? Uh, but you know. <laughs> the right play, man. That's so subjective. I love it. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no. When I see no, I, mean, I was just wondering I what you were thinking you when you saw that pass. You saw that's. Did you think that's the right play? Make or miss? Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As a as a basketball uh, junkie, right? Uh, I've seen um, a lot of situations. I've been a part of a lot of situations. Uh, sometimes it goes well when you get a ball up in a situation like that. Sometimes it doesn't, but the trust has to be there and the confidence and the energy of the basketball has to flow into your teammate. And again, it's not about the make or miss. It's just about the fundamentals that Dante exuded when he needed to make the shot. Balance, shot ready, was ready for the moment. Let's give him credit. Let's give Luca credit because everybody did their job necessary in order for that play to work. It, it, he could have missed and we would be sitting here in a different situation. But I think that's what makes competitive sports beautiful. Anything could happen. And, you know, fortunate enough, it went well on our end. And Dante made the shot. But um, it was a great pass by Luca. I won't call it the right play. It was the best play possible for us at that moment. If Luca gets it again, I don't know if he passes. But. We'll, just, we'll sit up here and, and play the X's and O's with Wonderman. <laughs> Thank you. Can you believe that was the first overtime game of the, of the season for you guys? Yeah, it felt like it. Yeah, <laughs> it felt like it. I think a lot, a lot of people were in the crowd were surprised, like, oh, it's only 5 o'clock overtime game here in Dallas. But no, it was, it was beautiful, man. It was a great competitive game. Some ish talking going on back and forth, too. So that got us going a little bit in the beginning of the game. Kind of going off that, on that, that statement. Dylan Brooks all over Luca. Luca kind of showed some of the, you know aggression. He's talking back to him a little bit. Um, how can you guys use that kind of you know shoving and that kind of thing in the playoffs like for motivation? Um, I think just by knowing our opponents well. Uh, I think I could have done a better job of preparing or uh, having a little bit of a deeper conversation with my teammates on what to expect from an MA Udoka team, especially after we played them in Houston and. We beat them the way we did, and um, you know they tried to junk up the game in the beginning, uh, leave it to the refs, and just the back and forth of um, just that is talking that banter. Um, it could go one or two ways. You just want to stay poised emotionally and uh, continue to work the game. And I think Luca did a great job of that. I think Dylan was trying to bait him to get his sixth <laughs> a few times, and 
Um, you know, it just comes with it. So just high IQ players, emotionally poised players go, go further along. Uh, so you just got to be a great thinker and be able to play through some of that physical contact. And that's what I've been getting ready for for these past few years. Um, haven't forgotten Ime Udoka's team, Boston Celtics beat me 4-0 and how they kind of just brought the physicality to us and we didn't know how to respond at that time and they were just more prepared IQ wise or excuse me X's and O's wise and yeah as a competitor I don't forget things like that so you know systems carry on with coaches so you can see that they've uh, taken on that MA Doka identity sort of thing. What, what is an MA Doka identity? How do you find that? Uh, on a basketball court uh, as a coach he's just I mean it's similar to who he was as a player you know he knows what it takes to win. He knows how to get into guys' heads. You know, he's guarded the best of the best. Um, he's also been face to face with the best of the best talking ish. Uh, so if you're familiar with Ime Doka's career, then you kind of know how he, he likes to approach it. And uh, that's what makes again sports fun is is getting to know your opponent like a chess player and being able to see three four head three four moves ahead and be able to work their adjustments against them and keep working the game in our, in our benefit. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Kyrie said uh, at the end of the game, you said, I'm tired, man. How tired were you there? Right. What's that moment like when obviously you guys rally, the wind secure, you go over there, you guys get your arms around each other? Great moment. I said, chemistry was good, so it was a great moment. Talk about the trust that is going through out the team and how Encouraging all the other players and stuff, and just the way the trust is cementing this mass team. Yep, uh, same as for a while. We all trust each other. Trust is big, the chemistry is big. Uh, so we all the role right now. Dante, uh, any question in your mind that you're going to pass that ball? Or do you think for a split second you should shoot it? I mean, I was going to shoot it, but then I saw two people in me, so I saw Dante open. Of course, I'm going to pass it. That's the trust. Luke, I asked Kyrie about this, but uh, Dylan Brooks was all over me tonight. Do you think that's something that when the defenders are like that to you in the playoffs, that can give you guys more, I don't know, motivation or anything like that? I don't think you need more motivation in the playoffs. You need more playoffs and some motivation to have. He's a great defender. And you take on the challenge. What's it like for you when you see Kyrie get the kind of group that he did? Luka, pomočnik, trenerja, se bo pridružil slovenske reprezentancije po leti. Vidite, mislim, zakaj, oziroma kaj vidite v njem in pa, ja, kakšne so pogledi, že kaj v poletje, če sploh. Super, super trener, zajka. Res je dobro to, če je to. Mislim, jaz nič pri tem, prašte, ne bolj gor višji reprezentanci. Zajka če ni pogledal politiku, to je prvo počet sezono, pa 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 je odgledal. Slovenska podpora tudi danes, kar nekaj gledalci iz Slovenije, kaj vam to pomeni? Veliko zelo veliko. Na velikih tekmih so bliži slovenci, tako da to mi je res veliko pomeni. Veli se super, ker je slovensko zastavo. Te, kaj utrujeni za nište počivanje v tekmi? Zelo sem utrujen. Vem spati za tekmi. Ima izvod, kaj tukaj 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 What's your fatigue level compared to other people's achievements? You feel less tired, more tired? It's okay. Uh, I'm now used to, to play all summer. A lot of games, so a lot of games under my legs. So that's what they do. You're looking forward to, to staying out of the play in and, and the, the week of rest that it, it will. Yeah, you know, is that the goal? That will help everyone. Yeah, I hope so. Luca, what about playing with Kyrie it's makes it so easy for you? Amazing player. It just helps everybody. Um, and I personally.
split second. I was like, do I let PJ get it? I was like, no, just go get it. So I just went and grabbed it and then tried to get the ball to Luca. And obviously I knew they were going to try and double. So it was just about not getting the offensive foul at first and then just setting up my feet. And, um, you know, Luca's obviously great knowing that two guys are, you know, going to double him and, you know, trusting his teammates. So. What does that trust mean to you from Luca and Kyrie? Yeah, it's big. You know, I think, yeah, it just, I mean, it, it goes back as, happened a lot throughout the season, um, you know, just missing one shot and they come to you like, yeah, shoot the next one, shoot the next one. And I think just in those big moments when, you know, you need to knock it down, it just, you know, kind of reminds you of, you know, the times that you, um, that had your, had your back. I know you jokingly talked about 50% of the shots, <laughs> yeah. but how did it feel to be on the good side of that percentage? Yeah, you know, I, yeah, I, I obviously joke about that, but, you know, it's, I truly believe that. So um, it's just a mindset I'm always going to have. Um, when I'm shooting, so um, if I live up to it, it's obviously perfect. You know, it's a really good percentage, but um, it's just the mindset that I'm always gonna. Have. When Kyrie gets going like that, what what does that do in terms of? First of all, what's it like to to see a guy in that kind of rhythm, and then what's it do in terms of kind of the confidence of the team and you know the the feeling of the uh, as you guys are trying to come back. Yeah, you know, I think you know, obviously, I mean, it's you know great when you have two players like Luca and, and Kyrie that can go off like that and um, obviously you know when Kai gets in the paint you know he's mid-range three get into the basket he can, he can do it all and um, you know they're going to have him make adjustments um, at some point and I think that's when it goes back to the trust of him you know throwing the ball to us or, or doing whatever but you know when it's times like that where they're just letting him you know cook like we just let him cook and watch so <laughs> You know, how enjoyable is that to, to, to be someone with a with a front row seat to, to watch him? Yeah, no, it, it, no. Obviously, it's enjoyable. You know, I think you know when he's got it going like that, and um, you know, I've obviously got him in practice, and it's tough. You know, he's so shifty and um, getting to his spots, um, and it, he's hard to block. Um, so you know, we trust him with the ball, and you know, obviously tonight um, he had the hot hand, so we you know we threw it to him and. You know, he produced. You, you guys struggled offensively a little bit to start the game and, and then got it going. Um, how much, especially since you're on the weak side, when you guys go five out, and like, how much do you feel the, the difference in spacing and how much of an advantage is that, that you have the optionality of, of being able to use Maxi there like you did a lot tonight? Yeah, yeah, obviously, you know, we had a bit of trouble with, the, um, you know, kind of that five rolling and getting into that short pocket. Um, but, you know, it's easy adjustments. And um, I think that's the best thing about Maxi. You know, he can adjust any defense. and. Play at the rim, play out on the on the wing, and um, and guard some of the the quicker guys. Um, so you know, hats off to Maxi to be able to, um, you know, guard those guys. If you call that cooking, uh, what, what do you call the final the final meal? Forty eight points. Oh man, uh, hopefully it's just cooking now, and you know, once we get the playoffs, it's you know, it's serving the whole meal. <laughs> so okay. Done. Okay, Dante, um, you're, I love your story. We talked about it earlier this year, what you've done over the past couple of years. Um, how surreal is it that you are about to be you know, on a postseason team making big shots like this? Yeah, I think it, it, it always goes um, back to the confidence, you know, the confidence in my ability. Um, you know, I think me making the jump over there wasn't, you know, kind of a, a step down in any sense. It was just a kind of a, a reassurance thing to go over there and, you know, Show what I can do, um, and you know I'm grateful and happy I was able to do that. And then you know, obviously be fortunate enough to put myself in a position to you know help the team in the postseason. Dante, congrats! Um, what about atmosphere in the You played in Serbia. It's, can you compare this? Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it was good. I mean, obviously, you know, over in Serbia, it's a different piece. Um, you know, no, no. Uh, um, dig to the you know Dallas fans or everything you know it was great in there but I think you know over in Europe it's just a it's a different beast that chanting and celebrating you know have people that are leading the chance that don't even watch the game they're just making sure they're, they're chanting so um, you know it was great it was loud in there tonight for sure but it's definitely a different beast in, in, in Europe. <laughs> You think playing in those hostile environments prepared you to have the poise that you do today late in games? Yeah I definitely think so um, I mean, if you've ever played for Partizan and got step into a Red Star gym at, at Peony, it's it's a it's tough. It's tough, you know. It's 
you know, we played a five game series against them and played two away and um, definitely a, a tough atmosphere. It just felt like they were on the court with them. So, um, you know, it makes it a little bit easier. And, you know, hopefully once you get to playoffs, you know, that um, after, I don't think it will reach that atmosphere um, away. But, um, yeah, definitely prepare me. Appreciate it. How exciting was that? Just how exciting was that? Yeah, it was great. Um, it wasn't the way we talked about or drew it up to start. But um, a lot of times it's not how you start, but how you finish. And I thought the guys, again, the, the talk uh, in the locker room and, and uh, on the bench was just to continue to keep working the game. Uh, that we knew we couldn't just shoot one 20 point shot. We just had to work the game. And I thought our defense got us back in the game. And then we started to make shots. But um, trust. For uh, the whole team, for Luca, the trust down the stretch, Exum steps up and makes a big shot. But just the trust with the double teams and the guys who got into the center of the, the defense and being able to make plays and PJ being able to knock down two threes there late. What do you preach to where a team doesn't give up the way that they didn't give up today? Yeah, I think it's just about you know, just the trust and, and the talk and just the understanding that we have each other's back. Um, no matter what's happening, uh, if you're not shooting well, there's always the encouragement that you can make the next shot. Um, just understand that we're playing for something bigger than just the, the back of the jersey, that we're playing for one another. And you can see that the chemistry in the team, um, when you look at the celebration at the end, um, just understand that it, took, it takes a long time to build that, um, and that just doesn't happen overnight. But the beauty of Kai and Luca hugging, there at the end, there's just a the trust. Um, but those two trust in their teammates that they were out on the floor um, was huge. You said before the game, you guys don't use ex don't use excuses. But uh, how tired were you guys, and how much did you have to push through to come back from 22 points? Yeah, everybody's tired this this part of the year. Um, also, give credit to Houston; they're fighting for their life, and uh, and just. Just understand that we knew that coming in, that they were it was their best shot, and they did. Um, but we, we took it and uh, found a way to win. Um, yeah, God, everybody can be tired, but as uh, we get closer to mid-April, uh, all that goes away because it's the next season. And so for us, we have to close out this season on a positive. we got now a road trip to go play Charlotte and Miami, so we can continue to work on our habits and get better. Coach, what does this win say about y'all's ability to battle adversity coming back from 20 plus? Yeah, I think uh, just that this is a team effort as much as you look at Kai having 48 and then um, looking at uh, Luca having 37, it was everyone. Um, Exxon makes a big shot. Um, I thought the execution late game, um, we got the foul, we got lucky with the missed free throws, and then Kai had a great look, um, you know, to be able to tie it. Um, and so just uh, what the guys are doing this time of the year is, is big, and we're going to need that going forward. Coach, what do you think about Luca and uh, the Brooks matchup? Brooks was, you know, all over him all day long. Luca kept fighting. What do you think about that? Yeah, well, that, you know, Brooks, that's what he does. He comes and takes a challenge um, every night against the best uh, offensive player. Um, and so Luca isn't, that's not, nothing new for Luca. Um, he's seen him a lot in Memphis, now sees him a lot uh, with Houston. Um, those two enjoy uh, going back uh, and forth against each other. Um, and so it's a, it's a great matchup uh, for fans. It's a great matchup for players. And so uh, it, it was good. It, it's healthy for the game. It feels like a long time ago, but when the offense wasn't clicking in, in the first quarter, what, what did you see that, that was going wrong and then what changed? Uh, maybe the 2.30 start. Yeah. <laughs> we normally are better in the afternoon games. For whatever reason this year, we haven't been as, as good at uh, getting off to a start. Um, no, I, I think, give uh, Houston credit, they came out and uh, was aggressive. But the, the beauty of, uh, of that locker room, no one caved, no one let go of the rope, no one quit. We just kept working. And, uh, and I think the, the hard work and trust and the belief that those guys have in that locker room paid off and it just continues to get stronger. How much do you guys also rely on? You know, just the, the Luca and Kyrie shot making to overcome that, to be able to be able to over, overcome a deficit like that. Well, those the Kai got going, yeah. so did Luca did too. But like Kai, you know, having fifty almost fifty points, we're going to rely on those two, and that's what we should do. But I think also just understanding um, when to go. Kai understands when it's time to go, um, and then understands when to play off of Luca, and it's a beautiful thing to, to watch and be a part of. 
but also just the trust of they're going to get double teamed for them to be able to trust that the next person is going to make the right play. Um, we start, I think, the fourth quarter. We we turned the ball over twice, um, but again, no one got out, no one, you know, was upset. We just had so we had to get stops and then we had to get shots. Specifically on Irving, uh, this was his high game as a Maverick, and then when you factor in what he's done for the last month and the Denver game, how would you kind of put into words what he's done this past month? Month plus, really. Everything we expected him to do. He's one of the best players in the world. And so um, he is playing the game um, at a high level. He is in a great place. Um, the energy um, is, is extremely high. The vibe is good. And so uh, he's doing uh, everything that we expected him to do. And uh, he's doing it at a high level. He's making the game easy for Luca, but also the other four who are on the floor. And it's, it's fun to watch. Coach, what did you think of Dante Exum's poise? Just he always seems to be making the timely play, especially as we saw tonight. Yeah, I, I, again, uh, Exum, the trust, uh, and we've seen this here of late between PJ and Exum guys being able to step up uh, when uh, Luca or Kyrie getting double teamed, um, not afraid of the moment, and that's you know that's great this time of the year. Thanks, Coach.